Hello and welcome to SmartBizUniversity.com, soon to be the number one site for learning how to start and grow your business based on biblical principles. I'm your coach and instructor, Terry Davis, and I want to welcome you here. I always like to start by welcoming those in our podcast community who are listening in uh, and perhaps carrying us with them. I want to welcome those who are doing the home study course. Uh, welcome and, and thank you for being a part of our community. And finally, I want to welcome those who are with us live uh, via webinar. Welcome and be certain to put your questions in the chat box. We'll get to those at the end of our session. So again, just uh, thank you and, and uh, we appreciate you being here and a part of our community. I always also like to start off by uh, telling you our mission statement for SmartBizUniversity.com and that is to train 10 million entrepreneurs to start and grow their businesses based on biblical principles to generate financial abundance to support their families and have a greater impact in this world and that means you this is all about you supporting your family and having a greater impact in this world learning how to do that through what you gain from uh, smartbizuniversity.com of course this is a 12-week course this is the last session of a 12-week course that has been going on and uh, uh, our, our course today is uh, on be a giver and have faith in God and of course our course is based on my book receive and achieve now and so uh, and there are the topics that we've covered in previous weeks and of course the last uh, sessions that were the session that we're covering today is be a giver and uh, have faith in God so let's dive right into this in terms of being a giver and uh, here are a few of our learning highlights and of course uh, uh, in terms of the, the learning highlights we've got you uh, we certainly want you to study the video uh, the study guide and also the book itself where you'll gain a wealth of information from combining and using and utilizing all of those resources but some of the things that we're going to cover uh, today are um, that, that number one that God urges us to be givers it's important as an entrepreneur that you be a giver and give and it will be given to you and these are some very well-known principles uh, from from God's Word uh, that that apply from an entrepreneurial standpoint as well uh, that you can't refresh others and not be refreshed yourself uh, honor the Lord with your wealth and your first fruit very important concept that we're going to dive into uh, in just a few minutes and blessings are attached to giving you know, and you want to be joyful when you're giving you know, because God loves a cheerful giver and he says so in his word and and when you give that brings God's favor uh, and profits to you and your business and so when you're doing good, when you're giving and doing good, you are doing God's work. And certainly, uh, as the old song goes, you can't beat God's giving. So these are just a few things that uh, we'll, we'll touch on today. So there are three perspectives that I want to start off with when it ter in terms of being a giver. And, and, uh, and three perspectives I'd like to provide you uh, that I think you should consider uh, and look at in terms of being a giver and how it affects you uh, in your business. And number one... When you're a giver, it gives you the right perspective on God. Number two, it gives you the right perspective on people. And finally, it gives you the right perspective on money. And that's kind of what we'll be covering here in terms of the, the effect of and, and some of the things that uh, relate to being a giver. Now, our overall themes here that we're going to cover also is giving back to God and then giving to others in business. We'll, those, will, those will be our overall themes that we cover. And as we know, throughout the Bible, God is constantly urging us to be givers. And one of the major be benefits of being a giver is that, that you can't give and it doesn't come back to you. It always comes back to you. And that's a wonderful law of God. It's one of God's laws. Uh, and every entrepreneur ought to understand that. Certainly, we want to create value for our customers, but there will be times when we want to have a giving spirit about the things that, uh, about how we go about doing our business. Uh, Proverbs 25 and 11 says, A generous person will prosper. He who refreshes others will be refreshed. And so this is God's word telling us that when you refresh others, you're going to be refreshed. Because that single act of, follow, uh, uh, of giving, uh, there are many acts uh, and many benefits that follow uh, and blessings that, that come from just simply being a giver and just having that giving spirit uh, throughout. So, so let's talk a little bit about the scriptures, though, a couple of scriptures that I want to point you to uh, as it relates to, to giving. And here's one in Luke 
chapter 6, verse 28, uh, 38, very familiar ver uh, scripture. It says, give and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you use, it will be measured to you. Very powerful scripture. So the, the, whatever you give, and that, that scripture is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, and so the other scripture uh, that I want to point you to is Malachi 3 and 10. I heard this scripture quite often uh, as um, the collection plate was being passed from time to time. Now you, you, that's kind of when you hear it. Uh, but it says, uh, bring the storehouse, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out such a blessing uh, that there will be no room enough to store it. And that's Malachi 3, chapter 10. And, and so God is constantly, again, telling us that we are to be givers and that, that he's going to give back to us when we give, that we'll have more than enough when it comes back. And I've seen it in my life, and I've seen it in other people's lives when they give. And see, the problem with a lot of us, particularly in business, is that we tend to close our hands really tightly when it comes to giving. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and God's word is telling us that we need to do just the opposite, that we need to, to keep it open so that not only that we give, so that things can get into our hands because God is going to, it's going to come back to you in ways that you can't even realize. Now, uh, in addition to um, uh, giving, you know, they, they certainly the order of giving is important as well. And uh, Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verse 8 and 9 points out to us that the order in which we give back to God is important. And this, this verse, uh, these verses say, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled with, to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. And I want to highlight the, first, the phrase, first fruit. It is extremely important that you understand that you give back to God the first. The order in which you give is as important as anything else. You want to give back to God first. And so uh, Pastor Paula White, uh, in her book, First Fruit, she has a book on this very topic called First Fruit. And this is how she puts it. She says, God still considers first things to be holy and devoted to him. But today, first fruit has to do with the practice of keeping the main thing the main thing. And God is the main thing. First fruits mean the first in place, order, and rank, the beginning, chief, or principal thing. And she continues by saying, God says first things belong to him in order to establish redeeming covenant with everything that comes after. In, in God's pattern, whatever is first establishes the rest. The first is the root, and only God can do that, have the first of the root, from which the rest is determined. Therefore, it is better to destroy your first fruit than to use any of it for your own personal gain. And that's Pastor Paula White, who, uh, from her book, First Giving. So what we want to do is to make it a habit of giving to God first because that's going to bless the rest. Not only does it bless the rest, he multiplies the rest. And it's wonderful how God multiplies that. He provides the increase for it. But we have to give back to him. It all belongs to him, but he allows us to keep 90% of it. And, and there are many places in the Bible that talks about giving back 10%. You know, the, the whole of the, 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 the world and the earth is, is God's and the fullness thereof. And there's a scripture that tells you that it all belongs to him. But we want to start to get into a practice of giving back to him. Because frankly, God is doing a work in us that we're not even aware of when we engage in the practice of giving back to him. There are many things that he's doing for us and to us as we get into the mindset uh, and have faith in terms of giving back to him. And it demonstrates when we are able to give back to him that, uh, that he, is a, he is first, that he is the priority. Because that's what we're talking about here, our priorities. How are you setting your priorities? And when we talk about giving back to God first, God is helping us to get a, a line, in alignment with him and helping us to understand how to set priorities. And, and it's important to do that so that he can bless us when we get into, into alignment with his will. 
It's so important to do that. And because if God is not first in your life, then there's no other place he's going to be. He's not going to be second place. He's not going to be third, fourth, or fifth, or any other place. The only place that God can hold in your life is first place. And you want to make sure that you place him there, that he knows that you place him there. And he gives you the free will to make that choice. And you want to make the right choice in terms of doing that because it's going to tremendously bless your business. And so now we've also got some exercises in the workbook uh, that you can do to start to, to test yourself about uh, the level of giving you, you're, you're doing, places where you can give, places where you can serve, resources and talents that you have that you might be able to use. So we want you to get the workbook and uh, go through those exercises and, uh, uh, and write out those things because we think they'll help, help to give you greater clarity about giving and giving back to God and then maybe finding places where you can serve.